Justin, 914, your number two, fall in the Cherokee, currently on a four mile final at 2000, important site. Today, we head back to the California Central Coast and visit a very unassuming airport, but one with a lot of military aviation history. We visit Santa Maria Public Airport. Santa Maria is a towered airport with two runways. 1230 at 8004 by 150 feet and 0220 at 5199 by 75 feet. On our way up north on another trip, we flew over this airport during a week-long U.S. military exercise called Bamboo Eagle 24-3. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. I don't want to spoil it. It's pretty awesome. But during this time, we saw four F-35s parked on runway 0220. Now there is transient parking to the right, which is limited, and next to it is the Radisson Hotel, which could make this a quick, easy stop on a long cross country. Now we chose not to stop at transient because we wanted to use the crew car to explore the area a little and get some lunch. And to be honest, that's why we fly into FBOs. We make sure to get fuel from them and in return, we borrow the crew car for the typical two hour limit. There is an airport restaurant, but it is in the commercial terminal. But Flight did say that the hotel has a restaurant, which we did confirm on the hotel website. Cherokee 300 Hotel, see parking. Jet Center, 300 Hotel. Cherokee 300 Hotel, turn left on Bravo 5, taxi via Echo, monitor ground. Left on Bravo 5, via Echo, and monitor ground, 300 Hotel. If you guys hadn't noticed, I mumble sometimes on the radio, and I hate that. I'm trying to be better, and I have to remind myself, slow and clear is always better. If you are coming in for the hotel, know that self-service fuel is noted on the charts with the fuel symbol just north of the tower. There have been inconsistencies according to ForeFlight with self-service fuel islands sometimes being out of service, but you always have the FBO as a contingency. This is a coastal airport, so the weather can include a marine layer, as was our case today with the high overcast. We flew in VFR no problem, but they do have an amazing resource on their website and it's the live camera, which we will link in the description. The best weather is one you can see, so we definitely appreciate them having this. This airport was specifically built by the U.S. Army during World War II to train B-25 bomber pilots, which was short-lived, and the airport was underutilized until a year later in 1943 when the Lockheed P-38 Lightning arrived. Currently, the airport does have a small air museum, which actually has a lot of fascinating artifacts. But the exciting news is that Planes of Fame is already in the midst of building a brand new museum of their own. And if it's anything like the one here locally for us at Chino, it's going to be amazing. Oh, and speaking of Planes of Fame, they're also taking charge of the annual Central Coast Air Show this year, September 21st and 22nd. So we definitely intend to fly in for that. Maybe we'll see you guys there. Now this airport does have one commercial flight and it's from Allegiant and it goes to and from Las Vegas. The FBO here is Central Coast Jet Center and they're awesome. On this day it was really quiet but that's not always the case. When we spoke to the gentleman who chalked us, he was telling us how just the day before he refueled two F-35s and they were expecting a couple of C-130s the next day. Of course, we came right in between all the action. So in summary, there are a lot of military aircrafts, especially during military exercises. 
crew cars are available at the FBO. Planes of Fame is building a brand new air museum. And the live camera is a great tool for real time weather. We really didn't know what there was to do, which is probably why we went to visit. So we could find out, and to be honest, there really wasn't much. But with the new museum being built and the air show coming up, it's going to be pretty exciting times ahead. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next week, don't forget to go fly, go discover.